Welcome to Mikon's hardware. The time is passing by very fast and I have got my Huanangir X99 FAD package. This is the motherboard I'm going to test in this video, or rather I'm going to tell you the test results of this motherboard. First, let's take a look at the motherboard specification. The motherboard supports two CPUs for Intel LGA 2011 version 3 socket. This could be Xeon E5 2600 or Xeon E5 4600, V3 or V4. If you would like to use two CPUs at the same time, you obviously need to use two identical CPUs. Small reminder, Xeon E5 1600 series are not working in dual CPU configuration. The motherboard uses server C612 chipset and it has 8 memory slots, 4 slots per each CPU. The same as Tintra X99 Dual, Huanangri X99 FAD supports full 4 memory channels per CPU. Thus, if you populate all 8 DIMMs with your memory sticks and install 2 CPUs, you will get octal memory channel configuration. On the motherboard itself you will find everything you might need. 4 USB 3 and 4 USB 2 on the back side, a USB 3.0 connector for the front panel and two USB 2.0 connectors for the front panel. 10 SATA 3.0 ports, 6 fan headers, two of which are for pin for the CPU fans. Unlike Tinsha X99 Dual which has just one PCI Express X16 slot, Huanangri X99 FADD has three full PCI Express X16 slots. In addition it has two M.2 slots, one supports PCI Express and VME SSD drives, the other one is for the SATA drives. The SATA M.2 connector is sharing connectivity with one of the SATA 3.0 ports, thus if you enable the M.2 connector, one of the SATA ports is gonna be disabled. Which of the ports is gonna be disabled, I didn't bother to check. Network is managed with the Realtek chip RTL8111H. There are two of these on the motherboard. Audio chip is also from Realtek ALC887, which supports 7.1 audio output. CPU power system is managed by six pairs of QN3107 plus QN3103 MOSFETs. Each CPU has six pairs of these. The motherboard has EATX form factor or extended ATX. The physical dimension of the motherboard is 30 by 32 cm. For the extras there is a postcode indicator, as well as power and reset buttons. Now let's take a look at the ports and slots test results. If you follow my channel, you probably know that many Chinese X99 motherboards have issues with USB 3.0 ports. Even though USB 3.0 ports work well on Huanangri X99 FAD, once during Crystal Disk benchmark with usage of my external Samsung T5 SSD, my system got stuck. I don't know why it happened and I was not able to reproduce this issue again, maybe it was because I somehow plugged the SSD in a wrong way or wrong order or maybe there were some problems with the contact. Anyway, I was not able to reproduce the issue. Additionally, I can say that unlike cheap Uttermiter X99 motherboard, which behaves weird and does all sorts of weird things and issues when trying to run Crystal Disk Benchmark over USB 3.0 board, Huanangri X99 FAD just stuck for a while and then restored its function after some time. The system did not crash and nothing wrong has happened. It was just a small stack and I was not able to reproduce it. Still, I believe it's important to mention that such thing has happened. Other than that, everything on the motherboard works well. USB 2.0, SATA 3 ports, M.2 ports, PCI Express X16 slots, fan headers, sound output and network ports are working well. Important to mention is that one of the PCI Express X16 slots, the one which is closest to the CPU sockets, is connected to the second CPU. Thus, if you are using only one CPU on the motherboard, one of the PCI Express X16 slots is not available, the one which is located close to the CPU sockets. The other two are connected to the first CPU and available even if you are using just one CPU. M.2 slot which supports PCI Express and VME SSD drives is also connected to the first CPU. Thus, if you are using Huanangri X99 FAD with just one CPU installed, every feature on the motherboard will be available for you, but the PCI Express X16 slot which is located close to the CPU sockets. As any other Chinese motherboard I have tested, X99 FAD has a problem with 3-pin fan connectors. 4-pin fan connectors can control speed of 4-pin fans, 3-pin fan connectors are not detected in the system, and they are all rotating at 100% of the speed. 
This is not a deal breaker, but just a limitation you should be aware of. Much to my surprise, Juan Andre X99 FAD actually supports Windows Sleep Mode. By default this feature is disabled in the BIOS, but if you need it you can go to the BIOS and enable it. For Linux test I used Ubuntu 2004 and it works perfectly fine. I didn't have to install any extra drivers, everything was detected and worked straight away. Booting from an NVMe drive is also supported. Unfortunately, stock X99 FAD BIOS does not have options to configure RAM timings. This is a bit of a disappointment, especially if you keep in mind that X99 T8D, the DDR3 version of this motherboard, has this feature in the BIOS. To test CPU power delivery system, I ran ADA64 stress test for 30 minutes using two Xeon E5 2678V3. With such configuration, maximum temperature for the VRM zone was around 60 degrees Celsius. The motherboard was tested while installed on a cardboard box, thus there were no additional airflow around the VRM zone, only the CPU fans were spinning. Thus, if you will install the motherboard in a case with a decent airflow, your temperatures might be even better. Nevertheless, 60 degrees Celsius is a very decent result, and I believe you could install E5 2690v3, E5 2695, E5 2697v3 onto this motherboard. Of course, you would have to keep an eye on the airflow and the temperature for the MOSFETs and the VRM zone in general. For the extra notes, I can say that unlike Qinsha X99 Dual, Huanan GX99 FAD actually works with just one 8-pin power connected. If you use just one CPU, it's enough to connect just one 8-pin CPU power connector. The other one is redundant. The motherboard also has Restore on AC Power Loss feature in the BIOS, and it works well, I have tested it. Huanan GX99 FAD looks exactly the same as Huanan GX99 TAD, the only difference is supported memory configuration. One works with DDR4, another one works with DDR3. That's why I decided to try X99 TAD BIOS on my Huanan GX99 FAD. Luckily or unluckily, but the BIOS is fully compatible and working with no issues. With Huanan Zhu TAD BIOS, we are getting RAM timings configuration, but unfortunately we are losing Windows Sleep mode. Also, the stock Huanan Zhu X99 FAD BIOS booting up slightly faster than X99 TAD BIOS. If you decide to flush X99 TAD BIOS onto your FAD motherboard, make sure to clear CMOS after such procedure. If you don't do that, the motherboard will refuse to start. Now let's talk about the CPUs tested. First, I have tested the motherboard with the two Xeon E5 2678v3 installed. As expected, maximum RAM speed is according to the Intel specification and is DDR4-2133. Turbo boost for the both CPUs is working perfectly fine according to the Intel specification. The following RAM configuration was tested. Two sticks 16GB each DDR4-2666 from Corsair, four sticks 16GB each also from Corsair DDR4-2666, then 8 sticks 8GB each SK Honix, server registered memory, 2 sticks 32GB each from SK Honix, 3 sticks 32GB each also from SK Honix, 4 sticks 32GB each from Samsung, and 5 sticks 32GB each from Samsung. I have 8 32GB of DDR4-2133 registered memory to test 256GB of memory. Unfortunately, on this motherboard with E5-2678 v3, I could not mix different memories. As soon as I install two memory sticks from different manufacturers, the motherboard refuses to boot. I have tested my SK Honix module separately, everything is working perfectly fine. Samsung modules are also working perfectly fine, but as soon as I try to combine them together, the system refuses to start. I have also tested my 8GB modules from SK Honix, mixing with some other modules with exactly the same specification but from Micron and Samsung, and 100 x 99 FAD with usage of these two E5 2678v3 refused to start. I am not sure if this is a problem of the motherboard or if it's a problem of the CPUs, but that's what I have got. Probably many of you are wondering if it's possible to implement Turbo Boost Unlock on Huanan GX99 FAD using Xeon E5 V3 CPUs. Well, here I have to disappoint you. First of all, the motherboard has locked BIOS and you would have to use external USB flash programmer in order to be able to write modified BIOS. 
I did not try to use awful win awful duels, but FPT is unfortunately completely blocked and it's not possible to use it. The second disappointment is that FFS drivers, which are supposed to be injected into the BIOS, are not working properly on this motherboard. As far as I know, no one has yet ever succeeded to have FFS drivers successfully working on a dual socket motherboard. I have tried all possible FFS drivers from all known developers and not a single FFS driver worked correctly. Still, if you have manually installed EFI drivers on the system level, then Turbo Boost Unlock is working as expected. Whether to bother with Turbo Boost Unlock or not, it's up to you, but in my opinion on dual socket motherboards, it does not worth it. The second tested CPU is E52620V4. Even though the V4 CPUs are still quite overpriced and not practical from the price point of view, I have managed to get myself one of these chips to be able to test if Chinese X99 motherboards are working well with the Xeon E5 V4 CPUs. With this CPU, maximum RAM speed on 100X99 FAD is the same as with the Xeon E5 2678V3. It is TDR4-2133, which is according to the Intel specification. And for the RAM, I have tested two sticks 16GB each from Corsair and a mix of 8GB modules of server register DDR4-2133 memories. Unlike Xeon E5-2678 V3, Xeon E5-2620 V4 is working perfectly fine when I mix RAM modules from different manufacturers on this motherboard. Installing modules from Micron and SK Honix onto this motherboard with E5-2620 V4 worked perfectly fine. Again, I'm not sure if this is a problem of X99 FAD or if it's a problem of Xeon E5-2678 V3, but with E5-2678 V3 mixing modules from different manufacturers did not work, with E5-2620 V4 it works. The only advice I can give you is that try to use modules which are identical and from the same manufacturer. I guess this information will be enough to make a conclusion about 100X99 FAD motherboard. Right now you can buy it for about 155 to 165 euros. For the pros we have dual CPU, at least 256GB of RAM supported, it has a very nice appearance, 8 memory channels, 2 network ports, 3 full PCI Express x16 slots, good audio quality, build quality is also quite decent. Touching the motherboard and working with it, I did not find anything squeaky, I did not find anything falling away, Overall, the motherboard felt really nice. Unfortunately, the motherboard also has a few cons. First of all, the stock BIOS does not have RAM timings configuration. Turbo Boost Unlock with FFS drivers doesn't work. The motherboard has locked BIOS and it's not possible to use modified BIOS without external USB flash programmer. As all of the other Chinese motherboards I have tested, this motherboard is also not able to monitor or configure speed of the 3 pin fans. Overall, my score for 100X99 FAD would be 7.5 out of 10. If the motherboard would not have that sudden hand when I was testing USB 3.0 ports, I would probably give it 8 or 8.5. But that slight problem with USB 3.0 ports is making me to remove half a point. If you're looking to buy 100X99 FAD or other 100 product, I strongly recommend you the official 100 show from AliExpress. So far, this is the best shop I have ever interacted on AliExpress. The seller is responding really fast, very friendly, very helpful. My package with 100X99 FAD was also packed really well. In the same package, I have also ordered 100 RTX 2060 and 100 GTX 1660 Super. Thus, if you're interested, you can follow my channel. Review for these two graphics cards should be available soon. For the curious ones, I also provide the link to Geekbench 5 result, which was taken using Ubuntu 2004 on 100x99 FAD motherboard. From the alternatives, we have Alfred Tesla Tinsha x99 dual motherboard and 100x99 TAD, which is almost a copy of 100x99 FAD but with DDR3 memory support. Still, out of these motherboards, I believe that 100x99 FAD is the best option. In comparison with Jinsha X99 Dual, X99 FAD has extra features such as three full PCI Express X16 slots, as well as an extra M.2 slot for SATA SSDs. The price though is the same between Jinsha X99 Dual and 100X99 FAD, 
Thus, I see no reason why you should pick Jin Shao over Huan Anju. If you plan to use Xeon E5 2678v3 with DDR3 memory, then Huan Anju X99 TAD might be your option. Other than that, I would recommend X99 FAD because it can host Xeon E5 V3 as well as Xeon E5 V4 CPUs, and DDR4 memory is compatible with both of the series. And that's probably all I can tell about Huan Anju X99 FAD. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope you have enjoyed it. Goodbye.